Howdy folks. Uh, Woody Wallace from needcoffee.com here. Back again for another Way Homer review. Here's how it works for the uninitiated. I have just seen a film, and I'm going to tell you about that film on my way home. And today we're here to talk about, what else could we be here to talk about? We're here to talk about The Dark Knight Rises. Maestro! Alright. So, uh... Jesus, I don't even know where to start. Uh, we'll start with a synopsis. How about that? Okay, synopsis is this. It's been eight years since the events of The Dark Knight. Um, and basically, Bruce Wayne slash Batman... That's, that's right, you're walking in the middle of the road. That's okay, take your time. We're, we got, I got plenty of review to make. What is wrong with people? Anyway, Bruce Wayne has become a recluse. Batman is gone. And uh, everyone still thinks Harvey Dent rocks the house. And crime is on the decline in Gotham. All is well. Not really. Because there is this uh, hulking guy uh, with, uh, with a great ADR crew called Bane. Um, that, uh, that basically um, <clears throat> is making machinations to do something terrible to the city of Gotham. And I won't say anything more than that because the eventual uh, unraveling of what is going on is, is part of the fun. And uh, what's eventually going to happen, and this is in the trailer, so this is no surprise, is that Batman is going to have to come back and face this new menace and try to save his city from ultimate destruction. So there's your synopsis. Okay, so... Obvious problems, let's say challenges, okay, is that you're coming off of the Dark Knight, all right, which was an epic, an amazing crime epic film with an amazing performance from the late Heath Ledger. Performances across the board, quite excellent, okay, just an incredibly tight film. So the expectations for this, at large, are rather high, and rightly so, uh, because, I mean, Dark Knight was, you know, billion dollar craziness. So, I mean, how do you follow that up? Well, you follow that up by bringing in Bane, and you're basically, as Nolan has said, this is his last film, so you're trying to basically put a bow on the trilogy, so to speak, um, and send it on its way, and do so in, uh, in a way that is pleasing to the fans, which puts even more pressure on you, because you're basically, you're not, I don't, I honestly don't think that Christopher Nolan is going to pull a Michael Bay, and uh, having seen the film, I originally, when Nolan came out and said, no, I'm not interested in Justice League, I'm not interested in doing more Batman, you know, normally in Hollywood speak, that either means, I think what he actually said was, what was it, I have no ideas for a Justice League film, which could mean like, either I actually have no ideas, or I just haven't thought about it, but if you paid me enough money, I could probably come up with something. I mean, that's how Hollywood works for the most part, okay? Like Michael Bay saying, oh, I'm not gonna do Transformers 4, six weeks later, Transformers 4. I honestly don't think, I think Nolan's done. And I think that he did, he, he set this up in a way that it makes sense for it to be done and it's right for it to be done. Now, obviously, seven years from now, they're gonna do another Batman film and somebody else is gonna do it um, and they're gonna reboot it and whatever. But this is done. Now, but again, talking about all the pressure going into this, that basically you've got all of that weighing on everybody. Now, the number one thing that I think I can say with great admiration about the film, The Dark Knight Rises, is that despite the fact that uh, they have all of this pressure on them, they basically... What are you, what are you laughing at? <laughs> what is funny? I'm trying to do a serious review here. I'm a very serious you reviewer. You're laying on everybody. I thought that you said Wang. On Wang? Everybody. You thought I said Wang on everybody? Oh my God! You're out of control. <laughs> you really need to get off the crack pipe, okay? Anyway. Continue. 
You know, my sound isn't done through IMAX, so it actually sounds good. We'll get to that in a second. Anyway, the point being is that if you didn't, if you didn't know all of that, which you do because you're a well-informed pop culture enthusiast, right? If you didn't know all of that, you would never guess from watching this film that these people were sitting there going, ah! I mean, if they are, then they certainly don't show it. No, but it, it appears to be completely... I won't say, like, you know, there's no nerves involved. There's no feeling in the film at all of, oh my god, we've got to crank this to 11, otherwise people are going to hate us. Um, so, I mean, that's probably the thing that I admire most. Um, the other thing that I really liked about it was the fact that it was a very uh, dense film. It's just immense. And it actually takes place on a larger scale, organically so, than the last film, because it's involving the entire city, and basically wants to tell you the story of this entire city, not just Batman. And does it? Now, I will say, you know, well, for, first of all, let me talk about, you know, the cast. The obvious players that we've seen before are all excellent. You got Michael Caine, you got Gary Oldman, okay? You got Christian Bale, who I think does, uh, you know, a, a good job, but he's not, he's actually not the most impressive acting thing in here. You've got, first of all, you know, like Anne Hathaway, who they very wisely held back her being Catwoman, um, so that when you saw it on the screen, you could go, there she is. I mean, it really is that sort of thing where you just go, wow, she's, she's really doing this, and it's really working. Um, also, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Fantastic. I mean, I agree with Rob. He's like the star of the movie. Because he's the, he's the guy at street level who's experiencing all of this crazy stuff going on. He was, he was fantastic. Uh, I continue to be happy with this guy. Now I can't wait to see Looper. Even more than I already couldn't wait to see Looper. Anyway. So, yes, you've got additional people in there. You've got Tom Hardy, who can apparently do more with only 20% of his face than most people can do with all of their face. The poor guy. I don't even want to know how many times they had to re-record his vocals to finally figure out how the hell they wanted him to sound. Because I swear to God, every trailer was different. Or they just played with it in SoundForge. I have no idea. But it's just like, wow. Um, so, yes, I mean, acting-wise, it was, it was excellent. Um, now, is it a perfect film? No, it's not a perfect film. And I almost don't want to even compare it to the last film because they are so completely different. I mean, because The Dark Knight to me was basically, you know, order and chaos personified trying to throttle each other. This is just, as you've already seen from the trailer, chaos steps in and goes, oh ho ho, I'm back. And then order just has to kind of catch up. So they're, they're, they're different films, you know? Um, so, um, there are some things like it takes a while to get started. Once it does start, it just keeps building and building and building up until the end and, and never lets off. So, I mean, there is something in that, in that it's just slowly, slowly putting its foot down on the pedal the entire film. It never stops accelerating, but it does so very, very slowly. Also, I would have liked to have seen Michael Caine do something other than cry, okay? Because he's very good. I love Michael Caine. And don't get me wrong, Michael Caine can cry. He's a professional crier. But I would have liked to have seen him do something other than that. Um, but, but yes, I mean, there, there, are, there are a few wrinkles in there. But for the most part, it's a huge canvas that they're playing around with. And I'm, I'm nitpicking almost. And I don't necessarily want to do that, because I, the number one thing is, I left the film satisfied, not just with this film, but with the trilogy as a whole, which is a remarkable and admirable thing to have done. I mean, think about how many series, how many sagas, uh, that, that you felt continued to build upon themselves and get better, and then ended felt like they actually ended, and then you went, ah, yes, thank you, that was good. It, it, it basically went out with its balls intact, is I think what I'm trying to say. 
So, so yes. Now, I, I will say, uh, I mean, there's so much I could talk about, but I don't want to give anything away in the film. I will say there's a lot, lots of gadgetry, and there's lots of interesting little plot wrinkles that will keep you guessing. So what I would say is, for God's sake, don't listen or read to anything that gives anything away about the film, because you will be sad, okay? It is best to go in complete blank slate and just go, whoa, because there's, there's woe in store for you. Um, from a WHOA perspective. Now, if you go to see it on an IMAX screen where the sound isn't balanced properly, like we did, then WOE is in store for you, I'm afraid. Um, because, I mean, the IMAX screen itself was amazing, because I think it was 72 minutes of footage were shot in native IMAX, okay? So that piece of it was big. Big scale, big city, big everything. But... I mean, when the sound is, is off balance so that anytime somebody isn't projecting their lines, you're going, what was that? I mean, that's not good, okay? So, uh, the, the cinema needs some help. And also, AMC, here's, here's a really interesting pro tip, okay? From a guy with an English degree who apparently knows your business better than you do, in that, here's an idea, when... You can't talk to the manager because the manager's busy cleaning one of the cinema houses because you're so understaffed that he has to do that. Uh, you know, he's cleaning. He's not backing up the one person you've got manning the box office. Now, I don't know why anyone buys things from a box office when there's a kiosk anymore anyway. It's 2012. But that being said, you got one person. You got nobody behind the manager's desk. You got one person at the box office and the manager's having to clean up. What the hell is going on with that? So, you obviously need some help. Because when the guy with the English degree can point out that you have a problem in your process, it must be a pretty big ol', because I'm not that bright. So, uh, all of that to say, yes, if you can see it on an IMAX screen that's not the screen that we saw it on, which I won't mention because that would be indiscreet, AMC Barrett Commons 24 in Kennesaw, uh, if you can see it on a screen besides that, then please do so in IMAX because I think it will be worthwhile. Uh, and I don't say that lightly because I know IMAX tickets are expensive. Ours was a morning matinee and it was still 11 bucks a head. So, um, so yes, I think it is definitely worth seeing. I think if possible, maybe not see it this weekend because it's going to be an absolute madhouse. And, uh, you know, but do catch it before it leaves IMAX because there's all these other things that are going to be IMAX. So keep an eye on when it's supposed to be done. All right. <laughs> and, uh, and the only other thing that remains to be uh, said is uh, we actually sat next to somebody who, whose son was in Aurora, Colorado, two cinema houses down from where the shooting happened this morning. Now, what kind of an asshole basically takes a gun into a cinema and tr decides to shoot the place up, right? An asshole who I hope, I'm glad they caught, and I hope they throw the freaking book at him. A very large book, in fact. One that's made of metal. So, uh, our thoughts go out to the people who were affected by that, because that is bullshit, all right? So, this is supposed to be a day of watching stuff blow up for fiction, not blowing stuff up for real. And for some people, apparently, there's no difference. And those people need to go away. So anyway, all of that being said, it's an, it's an epic review! It's like, it's like the review was a city, and we tried to blow it up as well. But we, we didn't. So, uh, so yes, I think cup-wise, I will close by saying, I think at the moment, I'm happy with giving it a four and a half. It's not a perfect film, but I gave Dark Knight four and a half. But I'm not comparing the two, so that was not a comparison. That was just an observation. So don't beat me up in the comments. Or you can. Either way, it doesn't work. I'm masochistic. So, uh, thanks so much for watching these. Uh, I appreciate everyone who comments on these and shares them. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm thrilled to know what you think about this film. Because it's, uh, it's not a small film. So until next time on The Way Homers, we will see you. Bye. Yes, one last thing. You know how Nolan loves to make everything as realistic as possible? I mean, you may have already caught this in the pictures that you've seen of Catwoman. 
But what happens when she puts her goggles up on her head? That made me happy every time I saw it. I'm so easy to please in some ways. Bye.